Hello people of YouTube, it's Deepak here and welcome to DCS World 2.8.8 and Polychop Simulations SA342L Gazelle Module. Welcome to Tutorial 5, HOT3 Anti-Tank Missile. Today we're going to demonstrate how to fire this anti-tank missile, of which you can carry four on the SA342L, two per side. It's a, a 6.48 kilogram tandem high explosive anti-tank warhead capable of penetrating up to 1,250 millimeters of armor. I'm assuming that's something like rolled homogenous. Um, it has a maximum range of 4.3 kilometers and it's SACLAW's wire guided with a flare. Uh, SACLAW standing for semi automatic command line of sight. So, what does all of this mean? Well, it means that uh, when you pull the trigger, uh, 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 an initial charge fires, getting the missile out of the tube uh, and getting it going in the first instance. It then has a sustainer motor which fires uh, about a second or two after that to accelerate it and to get it out to its maximum range. There's a flare which ignites on the tail of the missile. The gunner maintains the sight, which you can see here on the roof of the helicopter. It maintains the sight on target, and the system automatically computes what commands to give to the missile to move it from its current location, as indicated by the flare, onto the crosshairs. So all you have to do is keep the crosshairs on the target for the duration of the flight, and the missile should strike the target out to 4.3 kilometers. And with it having a tandem warhead, the, the idea behind that is that if there are things like uh, cages uh, or uh, explosive reactive armor or things like that, the first warhead basically destroys that, and then the second warhead, which is deeper inside the missile, contacts, explodes, and actually penetrates the armor. If there are no such active or passive protection systems, then both warheads detonate on the armor for even better effect. So, very, very effective missile, probably capable of destroying most armoured vehicles with a single hit, and we're carrying four today. So, let's jump into the cockpit, I'm going to fold away the tablet, and let's see how we go about setting ourselves up to fire. Uh, some of the setup is done in the right seat, but most of the setup is done by uh, the gunner, or the, the weapons officer. So uh, what we're going to do is, before we get started, this is going to be a little bit difficult for me to demonstrate because normally this would be done by a two-person crew. I'm going to be making use of the auto hover and uh, that might make this a little bit difficult for me. But nonetheless, I'm going to enable the uh, master arm now because I don't want to have to fiddle with that once I'm in the air. And if I jump to the gunner's seat, we're going to do some initial setup. I'll demonstrate how to get the sight first. This is the periscope sight. You can just pull on the tube and it swings down, and then we can see through the site. Uh, you want to make sure that you have mapped all of the necessary controls for the site, uh, so I'll just quickly show you where those are. They're under this uh, SA342 video periscope command box thingy, uh, and I've, got, I've mapped all of the slew and zoom commands. I've also mapped the command for stabilization. The, the site has ground stabilization, uh, and also changing the symbology, uh, which is normally used for estimating distance, uh, but we're actually going to use the laser rangefinder. The other things that I've mapped are things from the weapons panel. Uh, I've, I've mapped the controls for changing to the next station, uh, because it's, uh, it's easier to do it from the HOTAS than having to look down and click on the controls, but I'll show you what those controls look like. So let's uh, fold away the site just now, and we have the weapons control panel here. Uh, I'll see if I can actually get you a better view of that by moving the camera. Here we go. So this is the actual weapons control panel here, this box, uh, and then here is the sight control panel. So we'll go through each of these in turn. Uh, first you have the key, uh, and this allows us to test the two circuits in the missile. So uh, test one, we're getting a green light. Test two, we're getting a green light. We can be fairly happy the system is working. We can then turn it into daytime or nighttime use. Uh, I don't exactly know what nighttime does in this instance because the, the L model of the helicopter is day only. So uh, we're going to select day in any case uh, and it's showing 
green light for that, so the site is ready to go. You then have this rotary to select which, which missile to fire, and in between each of the stations is a zero position, so you always have a safe position that you can move to. And while you're moving from station to station, it always first de-energizes the circuit and gives you a kind of dead position first. So we're going to select station 1 initially, that means that we're ready to go. Uh, you'll see that the Bon light, the good light, comes on. That means this missile is in a good state and it's ready to fire. Um, and I guess this green light also means that it's good to go and missile is prepped, because these two lights go out when it's not selected. So this is the condition that we want. And then the other thing to note is that you have, uh, you've got wipers which don't actually do anything. You've got this button here to change the zoom. So you've got two zoom levels, you've got uh, 3.2 or 10.8, defaults to 3.2. Uh, we've got these different um, reticles that we can select. There's the automatic one, uh, I think it's 300 meter, 200 meter, 100 meter. Uh, I normally pop it all the way down to the 100, but I'll leave it in the automatic for now and you can get a feel for what these look like. And then this button at the top right is to turn on and off the stabilization. We're going to do all of this uh, while we're looking down the site. Other thing, before we get started, we want to flip the safety covers for missile launch and for the laser. Uh, with these two covers flipped, we can then just press the buttons on our HOTAS and everything will work correctly. Nice. Okay, so with all of that done, we're now prepped and ready to go. I'm going to jump back into the pilot's seat and we're going to take off and get into a hover. And I then have four armoured vehicles at the end of the runway, or a little bit further than that away from the end of the runway, which we will engage while in an auto-hover. Now, of course, in, in actual combat, sitting in an automatic hover a short distance away from your target is probably a pretty good way to get shot down, but today I'm demonstrating the operation of this weapon, not necessarily the best tactics to use, so keep that in mind. Uh, with the maximum range being 4.3 kilometers, you're going to want to be as far out as you can get, generally. I think our target here is about one kilometer away. So, anyway, let's... Oops, let's lift. That was a bit abrupt. There we go. That's better. We're going to get a little bit of height. And then I'll pop it into auto hover. Uh, with the full four hot missile loadout, the helicopter's a little bit heavy, as we were with the Mistral. That's okay. Okay, I'm going to stabilize about here. And I'm going to hit... Oops, no, we're descending again. I'm going to hit the auto hover button once we've got it where we want it. So that's it. I've just hit the auto hover button now and I've let go of the controls. One thing to note, you must keep your feet on the pedals. I just demonstrated why. Uh, the auto hover does not control the pedals. It will only control the cyclic. And it looks like I've got it out of parameters. Let's uh, take manual control again and try and get it back into a good situation. I'm also going to turn on the Doppler system to show its needles on the artificial horizon here. Should make things a little bit easier. Okay, let's try and get this back into a stable, stable position again. Okay, I'm going to press auto hover. I've let go of the stick. I still have my feet on the pedals and I have my hand on the collective. That seems fairly stable now. Uh, these are our four vehicles here. I'm going to go into the gunner's seat while maintaining your control. Oops, let's fold the sight so it's in the right position. Let's uh, get our camera back centered again. I currently have weapon number one selected. Let's see if we can pick out where these vehicles are. I'm just gonna zoom down a little bit. Oh, it's looking a bit like we've lost control again. So you can see, I this was actually very easy the first time I tried to do it. Uh, before filming, but of course the moment the moment I'm filming things go a little bit crazy. Let's try and keep it stable. I think I'm aptly demonstrating why you do want that second crew member. Okay, back into auto hover. Let's see if we can do this. So I'm going to slew my sight down. Keep it zoomed out just now, and let's find the targets. You'll note that we have a little arrow. Ah, we've lost control again. Or have we? It seems to be if the collective is not high enough, it goes it goes just a little bit crazy. It likes to have a bit of a, a excess uh, collective. That's it. That's it. It seems to be a bit happier now. 
Okay, back to the gunner's seat. You'll note this arrow at the top, that indicates whether we're looking to the left or to the right of the helicopter. The red uh, firing light is only available when we have the, the, the sight in alignment with the weapon system. Okay, and there we go. We've got our targets, we're going to ground stabilise there. I'm going to change the reticle to one of the ones with a crosshair. I'm putting the crosshair on my target. I'm now going to use the yaw pedals to bring the helicopter into alignment. We have a, a red light, that means we could fire now. I'm going to fire the laser first. We have a range, 854 metres. Maximum range, remember, is 4.3 kilometres. We're clearly descending, so I'm giving it a bit more collective now. Let's get the red light back. Pulling the trigger. Missiles away. Boom! Did it hit? Oh yes, looks like it hit. Next target. Going to move it over here. Crosshair is on. I'm going to choose the next station. I'm going to wait for the red light. Oof, helicopter is doing quite a dance right now. I'll give it some more collective. No, I think we're losing it. Back to the pilot seat. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm very aptly demonstrating why you do want that second crewman. Let's bring the helicopter back around. It's very easy to see the targets now because we have exploded one of them. Alright, let's stabilize this here. This actually worked really well the first time I did it, but of course, as soon as you're filming, these things will happen. Uh, the site did manage to stay on target, which is pretty good. Okay, I've selected the next station. We don't have a red light yet. There we go, we've got the red light. Missile is away. Keep the crosshairs on target, that's a hit. Let's get another one. I need to, need to bring the helicopter around a bit again. No, it is starting to get very unstable again. Let's see if we can do this. Keep it in parameters. Nope, we've completely lost it. We've completely lost it. So, yeah, I think uh, what I've proven here is that in reality you're definitely going to want uh, that second crew member. The the auto hover is, is going to give you a very hard time, quite a lot of the time. Cool. Okay, right. I'm descending now. I'm going to get myself back into some kind of stable position. I'm going to try and fire those last missiles off if I can. What station do I have just now? That's station two. Yeah, so station three is good. Station four is good. Okay. Well, then we'll, we'll go like that. Oh, and it looks like I'm going to crash if I'm not careful. There we go. We saved it. <laughs> yeah, there's a reason why this is a two-person helicopter. I think we have it sufficiently stabilized again though. So let's get the collective back down again, get it into a nice hover. Should do. Auto hover on. Back to the gunner station. Red light. Fire. Boom! Target down. Right, one more target to kill. Now we can call it a day. Next station. Line up the arrow. No? I think I skipped one of the stations. Yep, it would seem that I've skipped over one of the stations here. Two empty tubes, two empty tubes. It's actually station number two that I apparently did not fire. So let's uh, see if we can get this out of the way. Move the control. We want... Station 2. I suspect that we've done something wrong, and that's going to stop this missile from firing. Yeah, it will not fire. But I fired them out of sequence. I think I actually skipped over 2, and for some reason that means that now 2 will not fire. Oh well, fair enough. I managed to get 3 out of 4 off in any case. So uh, let's return to the pilot seat, turn off the auto hover, and we have manual control of the helicopter once again. Let's uh, quickly observe our targets, and then that should conclude our little mission there. Now, I made use of Auto Hover. It's a new feature with the new flight model. It's, uh, it's now much harder to use than the previous one was, and this is somewhat intentional. 
uh, because the new one is supposed to more realistically portray what the auto hover is like in the real helicopter. We also have auto turn to target, which I could have used, uh, but I instead opted to manually turn the helicopter on target. Uh, so there you go. That's the whole procedure for using the Hot 3 missile on the Gazelle. Uh, I hope that you all enjoyed that. Um, if you haven't already, please subscribe, like, and comment. It's a really big help for me and for the channel. You also have the option of further supporting me by joining Deepak's ground crew for a small monthly fee. You can do this by clicking the join button below. Big shout out and thank you very much to those of you who have already done so. Your names are on screen now. Uh, at some point in the future, I might come up with a better way of doing this. But uh, this is what I'm going to do for now because it was taking a very long time to read out all of you fine, fine people's names. I'll continue to read them out though during the DCS news streams. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you all next time.